Good morning, Professor Joost van Hoof. Um, I'm very pleased to have you as the first Health and Wellbeing Priority Research Area Seminar Speaker of the academic year 2019-2020. Um, so just to give a bit of context to who you are, uh, Joost, you're a full professor of urban aging at the Hague University of Applied Sciences in The Hague in the Netherlands. And you're also affiliated with Rochlau University of Environmental and Life Sciences in Poland. You've also been a member of two uh, housing associ board member of two housing associations for older people, and your research interests include housing, urban planning, and technology for aging populations in cities. I'm very pleased that you've agreed to do this seminar today. And the title of your presentation is Age Friendly Cities in the Netherlands, an Exploratory Study of Facilitators and Barriers in the Built Environment. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for this introduction. Welcome to my seminar. Um, first of all, the name of the chair is called Urban Aging. Uh, many people always ask me, what is urban aging? Well, urban aging is about um, an emerging domain in social and health sciences, which is related to population aging and urbanization. And both the population aging and urbanization are the culmination of successful human development. And why is this so? Because it took ages and centuries for cities to grow the way they are today. And of course, the population is getting older and older all over the world. And if we look at cities in particular, the OECD has, re has published a report in 2015 stating that cities are home to over 40% of the older people in its member states. So that means that it's quite relevant to study older people in the context of urban development and living in cities. Um, if you look at urban aging, it deals both with aging um, of the population and living in cities. And urban aging has great implications for both architecture, building, urban planning, and real estate manager, uh, management. Um, if you look at this map of the world, and which was published by the World Health Organization, we see that populations are getting older, not just in Europe or in North America, no, even in Asia, in countries that we least expect, like Iran, Thailand, South Korea, and even China. Um, as you can see, only Africa or the African continent will remain young because of the high uh, birth rate numbers that we still see in such countries. And if we look at a second graph, you see that the speed of population aging is going ever faster. In France, it took many, many decades uh, to reach a percentage of 20% of all the people in the society. And if you look at Japan, it only took a couple of decades. And in China, Brazil and India, it's going even faster. And that some, says something about the speed of population, a, population aging um, in countries which we often consider to be um, developing. In order to um, have an answer to the population aging in city, the World Health Organization has published a global age-friendly cities guide in 2007, which means 12 years ago. And actually this guide um, is used by a worldwide movement to create age-friendly cities. And many cities in the world have joined this consortium. And if you look at the um, official definition of an age-friendly city. Um, it goes as follows. An age-friendly city is one that optimizes opportunities for health, participation, and security in order to enhance quality of life as people age. And this definition is quite broad. Um, and luckily, there's also a model, which is shown on the slide, um, which looks a bit like a flower with eight petals. Some of the petals are related to technology, like transportation, housing, outdoor spaces and buildings, or maybe not technology as such, but let's say the product of engineering. And on the other hand, you've got the social factors like social participation, respect and social inclusion, 
community support and health services and civic participation and employment. And then there is a, an eighth um, petal, communication and information, which could be um, both delivery of information through technology or the way people communicate with one another from a social perspective. Um, if you look at the map of the world, you see that there is indeed a global network for age-friendly cities and communities with many of the member cities um, found in Europe, particularly in Western Europe, in the United States of America. Some of them are located in, in South America, We've got a couple of cities in Australia, some in South Korea and in uh, Japan. But there are still cities signing up to become a consortium member. And um, what I like so much about this global network is that they do share findings, best practices, um, learning points with one another. And it's really nice to see how different cultural contexts influence the way we shape our cities. Um, today, I would like to show you a bit about a study that um, I did with the, uh, the team in the Netherlands, um, together with the help of Dr. Marston. And the aim of the study in the Netherlands was um, to study how visible age-friendly features are in an age-friendly city. And what we did is we looked at the visibility of such features in terms of hindrances and facilitators. And hindrances and facilitators are two terms that we know from ICF, so from the International Classification of Functioning from the WHO. Um, the Hague, the city I'm based in the Netherlands, um, has been an age-friendly city or a member of the consortium for many, many years, which also means that we have to go through the cycle, which is shown on the slide. And that means that you put in, you put policies in place, you start planning to implement these um, uh, policies, then you've got a process of the actual implementation, and after five, six years, you start to evaluate the progress um, that these policies have, have um, led to in society. And then, of course, you've got this whole cycle which starts over and over again. Well, the main aim of our study was to investigate the extent to which features of age-friendly cities are visible in the cityscape, both positive and negative. Um, well, the basis of this study was the fact that I know that millions of euros have been, in, have been invested in making The Hague a more age-friendly city. But I just wondered how much of it is visible to ordinary citizens and taxpayers. So we commenced this study about a year ago, um, and we used the age-friendly cities um, model of WHO as a basis, and we conducted a research in five um, areas, five neighborhoods in Haaglande region, which is like greater The Hague region, so to say, um, and we used five neighborhoods. One of them is a city center of The Hague, called Schavehage or Den Haag in Dutch. The second one is a neighborhood called La Quartier, which is a neighborhood which is about 100 years old. Then number three is Wateringseveld, which is a, quite a recent addition to the city, which was only built about 20 years ago. And we also use two neighborhoods in a adjacent um, municipality called Soetermeer, which is sort of a suburb of The Hague. And we studied the city center and a neighborhood that was built in the 1970s, 1980s. And I would like to stress that Soetermeer is not an official age-friendly city but does quite a lot to make the municipality more age-friendly. We wanted to see if there were any differences between The Hague as an age-friendly city and Zoetermeer as a non-age-friendly city, or at least in terms of not being a member of the consortium. And what we did is we went to the neighborhoods 
with photo cameras and we took pictures of all the age-friendly and non-age-friendly measures and features that we saw in the street. So, to round up, we went to two cities, five neighborhoods. We took pictures uh, based on the WH, WHO model of age-friendly cities with these eight domains. And in the end, we also checked our findings with inhabitants of the respective neighborhoods as a way to do member check. So what about The Hague and Soutermeer? I took some postcards. The Hague is known as a center of government, but it's also a United Nations city with a peace palace, um, very international, um, lots of modern architecture and nice old and traditional architecture. Um, it looks a bit like Amsterdam sometimes. And Zoetermeer, well, it was built on pastures in the 1970s. It used to be a very small village, um, very modern, maybe a bit outdated because it was all built in the 1970s, 1980s. About 180,000 people living there. And it's completely dependent on the Hague for services. And many people who live in Zoetermeer have family in The Hague, go there for shopping, go there for work. So it's a bit of a twin, twin city, so to say. Before starting, I would like to show you some um, images, recent images from The Hague, which also give away a bit about what I'm going to talk about. So here you see the importance of accessible public transportation. This is a local uh, tram that takes people from the city center to Wateringseveld, one of the studied areas in our study. Um, but of course, the Netherlands also puts a lot of um, emphasis on walkability of cities and city centers. And here you see a pedestrian crossing in the city center with all the people crossing. Um, our city also puts a lot of stress on the importance of leisure. A lot of people who are retired have lots of time and a bit of cash to spend um, on leisure. So it's important that we make our cities attractive, not just for our own citizens, but also for uh, day tourists who come in from all parts of the country and even from abroad to spend some time in an attractive city center. Um, another distinct, uh, distinctive feature of The Hague is its multicultural um, uh, population. A lot of people have a migrant background. Um, some of the services that we offer are catered to the needs or tailored to the needs of um, migrant groups. Some of the uh, nursing homes have a very specific population of migrant people only. Of course, um, um, day, day care activities are tailored to the needs of, of people. And of course, people like to hang out with like-minded people. And then one of the things that is often, often overlooked is the role that modern technologies play. Too often, um, people think that older people are not so technology savvy. Well, that's not really true at all. Many older people in the Netherlands have a laptop or a tablet computer, use smartphones to stay in touch with children and grandchildren, to do internet banking, to look for information, etc. So I think that technology is over, often overlooked, but it actually plays a very important role in the creation of age-friendly cities. So. Let's go to the results of our study. Um, a lot of the results will actually be um, pictures that we took, and I'm going to talk about um, the pictures that we took and what the actual meaning of these pictures is in relation to the age-friendly city concept. So we have three neighborhoods in The Hague, and we have two neighborhoods in Zutomia. Looking at The Hague Center, well, first of all, on the bottom, right you see a green box which is actually a 
storage container for mobility scooters. Many people who live in multi-story housing only have a staircase to lead them up, but of course you cannot access the staircase whilst being seated in a mobility scooter and people have no place to park them. So you can go to the municipality and ask for one of these shelters or containers to store your um, mobility scooter. And I think it's really nice that the municipality allows you to put one of those storage boxes on municipal land. On the corner right, there's a picture which um, shows the entrance to an underground tram station in the city centre. But it says that it's actually forbidden to park your bicycles against the glass uh, barrier. But it also says that it's forbidden to park your mobility scooters um, against the same glass barrier. Well, on the one hand, it shows that the municipality considers um, mobility scooters or users of mobility scooters as full participants of traffic. But at the same time, it's not really a friendly site, to be honest, because it doesn't say where um, you got an alternative for parking your mobility scooter. And I will come back to this uh, on another slide. In the um, left bottom corner, you see a code of conduct that we found inside an apartment block, which is actually social housing. And it shows these four or five, no, six cartoons in total. And two of them um, display or show all the people in context. But it's two grumpy old ladies, um, one being angry with kids and the other one worrying about the um, garbage that piles up in the, in the apartment block. And these two older people are actually shown in a, well, in a negative manner. And if you look at the um, public images of all the people, they are too often too negative. And it would be nice if the Social Housing Association could do something about this negative image, which is not really um, an honest reflection of the truth, so to say. If you look at the central collage, I'm going to zoom in. Um, these are four images of the town hall or the city hall of The Hague. And what was really striking is that if you want to make an appointment, you have to go to a kiosk first. Um, you get a an, an, uh, special two-dimensional um, barcode that you need to um, collect. And only once you've made a online appointment, you can actually go to the town hall to meet with someone. And having all this technology around can be quite distractive for all the people and can also be a barrier to people who are less literate or lack certain technology skills. The other two pictures show um, mobility scooters. So there is a special mobility scooter um, parking at the, uh, the town hall, but there is no um, socket where you can actually charge the batteries and some of the um, revolving doors uh, cannot be used by, by um, people in mobility scooters as show uh, show the stickers that are put on the on the doors themselves but many people um, mistake the sticker for not being welcome inside while seated or using a mobility scooter and that's not what the sticker is about and moving on, we have a lot of um, automated access buttons all over the city for people in wheelchairs. And I know that not, not all people are seated in wheelchairs, but some are, or mobility scooters. And it's quite nice that if you are less mobile, you just have to push a button and the doors will open. The other two are showing level access entrance to um, the public transportation system. Most of the platforms are raised or elevated, but not all trams and buses um, have this lower access or thresholdless um, access. And some of the other models still have stairs to climb and they can actually pose barriers to people who are less mobile. 
If you look at the city centre itself, there's a lot of benches, but people do complain about the lack of backrests and armrests to help them get out of the um, um, benches once they've um, sat down. Um, pedestrian crossings always have level access um, or leveled access to the pavement, but this is one of the examples where that's not the case, sadly. And even women with small uh, young children in prams can benefit from this. And most of the barriers have been taken away. Um, but still, you see antisocial behavior where people park their cars on the streets and there's no little poles to um, block them from entering the pavement. And of course, if you have an old historic inner city, you will always have old monumental buildings with staircases, which cannot be climbed by people in wheelchairs or using um, wheeled walkers, so to say. And this is the cafe of a museum, and it's simply not accessible, which is quite a shame because many um, visitors of museums are older people and they'd like to go out for a drink after they've um, visited the exhibition. Then the last um, images of the city center. So we also went to the shops and many of the shops have open doors with air curtains, which are quite um, easily accessible for all age groups. Um, but sometimes the corridors are too cluttered. This is one of the stores where it seems all right. Then the second picture is from the cinema where seniors can still get quite a bit of discount if they go um, see a, a film or a movie. Um, then there's this whole discussion about public toilets. We have too few public toilets available for all generations. I know that some countries, including England and New Zealand, are trying to best to come up with app, apps, mobile phone apps, to show people to the nearest um, public toilet. But they're not that common in the Netherlands, and it's a problem. And then the last one, which I really like, you increasingly see all the people pop up in professional ads from companies. And this one is one for a mobile um, application for payments, and it's one by one of the largest Dutch banks. And I like the fact that all the people are increasingly seen as an important uh, group of customers. Then we went to uh, Laak, and Laak is an area that was built 100 years ago. It's one of the most multicultural areas in the Netherlands, but lots of thresholds everywhere um, and lots of multi-story housing. Uh, where you have to climb stairs first in order to reach your house or your front door. And in the past, it was quite challenging to get stair elevators installed because of fire, fire uh, safety regulations. These days, it's okay. You can get permission from the municipality to install them. And in many occasions, you see these rails and the actual stair elevator in place. But if you look at the street levels, there's a lot of um, barriers to small old shops, but also to these parks on the right side where people can actually sit down, but it's simply not, you're not able to access, it, access these parks if you're seated in a wheelchair or in a mobility scooter, which is quite sad to see. If you look at the, um, the four pictures here, you see that the local supermarket has special bars attached to the wall next to the, to the entrance where people can park their mobility scooters and chain it to the wall. Um, and this is another feature from the Netherlands, these small senior cars called Kantas. You don't need a full um, driver's license, only one for a moped. And you can park them anywhere, even on the pavement and it's all perfectly fine, and many older people like to use them, especially in large cities where parking space is limited. One of the good features about Laak is that there's a lot of um, senior parking, but also parking for people with a disablement, and the, um, the parking lots are very broad, so there's enough space for transferring, 
And again, we had a look at the supermarkets, and most of the supermarkets actually have quite broad um, lanes or corridors, so people can easily um, reach for the products that they want to um, buy. Then something about the provision of information. There are a lot of activities being organized in The Hague and all over the, um, all over the neighborhood. You see posters, leaflets, pamphlets, um, trying to recruit people to be a volunteer or to join in activities. But some of the pictures used are quite stereotypical, especially with the center of, for all the people which is the second picture um, from the left. Um, it's always these shopping carts and uh, wheeled walkers that people use, whereas the vast majority of older people, especially third ages, do not use these uh, mobility aids at all. Wateringseveld, only 20 years old. Um, there are lots of healthcare centers in this uh, neighborhood in one of them you can actually rent this electric tricycle which i like a lot it's an electric tricycle and if you want to go out and cycle around you can um, get this one for for hire that's really really nice um, again a lot of older people all over the place um, this is the local the local uh, shopping center where there are many elevators with broad entrance doors. Everything is level access, as you can see. If you walk outside with a shopping cart, like on the third picture, there are no thresholds, there are no curbs. Um, the pavement sort of transforms into a bicycle lane, transforms into the road itself, and there's just some rills and gullies to take care of the rainwater. Um, again, the problem with the public benches, no backrest, hardly any decent armrest, so many people can't get out. Um, this is about the provision of information. Um, many of the posters that you see all over The Hague are put up behind a window, but the window is mirroring and reflecting. So many people have problems reading the information because of the type of glass that is used in the windows, and that's something that needs to be improved. In The Hague, and this is something I really like, we have a special um, newspaper called the Oud Hagenaar, which means something like the old citizen of The Hague, um, with information for all the people. Um, some of it is just more like a, like a journalist report, but there's also a lot of information about activities. And I really like this. It's, it's free of charge. You can take as many copies as you want and share them with other people. Again, about um, positive imaging, this um, older man with a towel around his neck is shown on the window of a healthcare center and he's invited to come to the gym. And I think that this type of depicting older people is so much more positive and it's really inviting to uh, many potential older clients. On the fourth page, you see a living room inside a nursing home, which is also available for activities for people who still reside in the community. Um, it's more like a community uh, living room. I really like this concept. And if you want to organize a party or a meeting for people in the, in the community, you can ask for this, uh, for this space and use it. And these are um, four pictures relating to the public um, space and transportation. I think it's quite annoying that you can no longer pay in cash if you want to uh, take the bus. Lots of other people see this as a barrier. Another barrier is this uh, crossing of a uh, tram rail. If you're seated in a mobility scooter, you cannot pass through the fence because you don't have enough space to actually turn around in an S-shaped curve. And this is something the municipality needs to work on, that it's actually really unsafe if you want to pass through um, the fences. The other one that I find quite peculiar is that you have this little slope um, in the form of a bridge 
But if you go down in a wheelchair or with a wheeled walker, you automatically have to stop at the poles because there is a um, crossing with traffic, with regular road, and it can be quite, um, quite a dangerous spot. And I must make a compliment to the city of The Hague, but many of the curbs that we have in the cities are actually um, dropped curves, so it's easy to access while seated in a wheelchair using a mobility scooter or walking around with a pram if you're a young mother. Then Zoetermeer. Well, in Zoetermeer, you also have these underground um, tram and tra uh, train uh, tracks, but here it's still fine to park your mobility scooter against the glass barrier, unlike um, in The Hague. So that's a bit of contrast. Um, Zoetermeer, the city center, has its forum, and the forum is nothing else than the um, official city hall, but it has a lot of seats and places where you can have coffee. There is a library where you have large print books, which are available for free. And a lot of other people can be spotted here, can be seen here, sitting around, having a chat, having a coffee, um, being informed about activities. And I really like this concept of a city hall or town hall which is also a gathering place for the community and not just a, a building where civil servants are working. The city center itself is all level access, um, lots of seats, lots of older people also showing up in advertisements. Here you see one for um, assistive technologies and one for incontinence materials. I'm not too sure if the woman advertising for these um, incontinence materials is really happy about their situation, but at least she sort of appears to be happy um, with the way she is. As I said, everything is level access, and if it's not really level access, um, entrepreneurs and shopkeepers will install little ramps. Um, on the first page, you see someone in a mobility scooter, and right next to it on the right is a rail or a gully for the drainage of rainwater, so there is no need for curbs. So everything is level access, and I really like that um, approach to um, infrastructure. Again, many um, parking lots for people with a disablement or people who are simply old. And then the fourth picture, it's a picture taken inside a supermarket. Lots of supermarkets in the Netherlands have coffee corners where you can just take a cup of coffee sit on around a table, chat with other people, read the local newspaper, and it's all free of charge. And also here in Zoetermeer, you see such um, places. Then we went to Zoetermeer Roqueveen. That's a different story. Lots of um, uneven pavements, cracks in tiles with um, weeds growing in between. And that's mainly because it was built on PT soil, which is subsiding. Uh, during the course of um, the decades. Um, once every so many years, the municipality will redo the, um, the pavements, but still all the people complained about it. On the second page, you see the tile. That's the place um, to stand or go stand and wait for the bus to arrive. And that means that the ramp, which allows you access to the bus, will actually be right there. On the third page, you see the gap mind the gap between the platform and the local train. And this is one of the few tr train stations which has quite a wide gap and is not entirely suitable for people in mobility scooters. Rockeve, which is the name of this neighborhood, has a very large community center and shopping center, and all the access to the shopping center is totally even. But people are being warned for slippery floors and what I found quite interesting was the circular concrete objects on the first picture, which are often used as seats by older people, which are actually artwork, so not intended to be sitting on. And many older people complained about the quality of these um, seats, that they were not very comfortable. And then on the last four pictures, it's interiors from um, apartment blocks for all the people. And as you can see, there's a lot of information available to all the people about all these activities that are going on. 
And on the second poster, on the second picture, you see a lot of brochures and pamphlets and leaflets with our activities for older people. So I really like the fact that they are a self-organizing group, that the um, social workers organize a lot of activities, and that there's simply a lot of things that you can do when you're old. Well, if you look at the discussion and the conclusions, as I said, um, The Hague is an official member of the WHO consortium, and Zutemir is not. But both cities actually have integrated many age-friendly features into the neighborhoods to make the societies more inclusive for older age groups. And there's not really a visible difference between The Hague and Zutemir, to be honest. Um, if you look at the WHO model, it has these age battles, but if you look at the visibility of age-friendly features, they manifest mainly in the domains of communication and information, with all these posters and brochures, housing, transportation, community support and health services, again, in the form of many of the posters, and the outdoor spaces and buildings, mainly in terms of accessibility. Ideally, your design should not treat all other people as frail as, or disabled because most people, especially third agers, are still well off. They walk around, they are looking for ways to engage in leisure activities and they do not use um, a wide range of health, healthcare and social services at all. One thing I liked really a lot about this study is that older people are very visible in the cityscape of both municipalities. And I guess it's an expression of the changing demographics. All over town, you see older people being engaged in labor, in leisurely activities, in chatting, having a coffee, um, meeting with others, walking around with grandchildren. And you really see more and more older people in your society. And to me, that means that not, it's not just a line in your textbooks. No, it becomes reality. Our societies are aging and it's becoming increasingly um, visible. And to me, it's also a sign to my students that it's really important to go work in this domain of aged care because it's the future. That brings me to the end of my slideshow. And I know that you've prepared a couple of questions for me, Hannah. Yes, I have yours. Thank you very much. Uh, before I go on to the questions, could I just ask you for our um, listeners when this video is uploaded, could you define or how do you define third age people, please? Well, in my um, personal um, personal uh, definition, it would be people who are aged 67 and over. And I say 67 because it's the official retirement age in my country. Um, who are still active, who still look for a meaningful life, but do not yet use um, healthcare services um, like home care, um, nursing home care, and who are not physically disabled. So do not use um, um, wheelchairs, so to say. So I have a bit wider or broader definition of third agers and fourth agers i would say are the people who reside in um in nursing homes and are very reliant on healthcare services that's great thank you very much so my first question for you is um in your discipline in your research area what kind of improvements would you like to see both in the netherlands in the hague but also on an international scale um, in terms of research, she said, or in terms of policy and practice? Both. Um, I, in terms of policy and practice, I really would like to see an integration of the urban planning aspects of age-friendly cities and the delivery of social care and combating loneliness, um, the delivery of healthcare services, to me, these communities are quite divided and not working together enough. As I've said before, I think it's important to start considering the use of technology and the role of technology, knowing that um, an increasing number of older people are very 
technology savvy and don't mind working with computers. Um, and still, we, we too often see technology as a barrier. And I think in the Netherlands, but also in the UK, we should not. And we should actually embrace technology for all the options it provides to older people. And I think that many of the um, policy makers um, still see technology as a barrier. Um, and, and, and we shouldn't. And there's one thing that I don't like about this whole concept of um, age-friendly cities and the way it's currently um, currently undertaken by many of the uh, municipal workers is that too often age is equalized or treated the same as disablement or as being um, less mobile, so to say. And I think we shouldn't regard all other people as potential wheelchair users. And too often being disabled is just an alternative term or a synonym for old age. I think those are the things that we really need to think of. And would you agree for that from a research standpoint as well? Yeah. I think it's too often an understudied um, cohort, these third agers. A lot of research attention is spent on fourth agers, but they are only a minor group and they are a very important group, don't get me wrong. But given the fact that my parents and even your parents are or are becoming third agers, it's just a, it just doesn't make sense to me why we don't study these groups in more detail and look at their needs and look at their potential ways of making their lives more meaningful. I think it's an, an overlooked age group which needs more of our res more attention from our research uh, community. Thank you. Um, my second question is: What has been your biggest failure? And what lessons have you learned or did it teach you? Well, failure is a bit of a big word, but it may hold some truth for other people as well. Sometimes when you have a job, um, the match between you and your job is not perfect anymore. It is really time to go. Don't hold on to the job. Don't hold on to the position go look for something else because there are so many opportunities in the labor market and you in the end will feel a much better person once you've taken the step to find another job find it and be allowed to grow and to explore new sites to yourself and to your research domain and it's something i wish everybody who thinks that he or she is no longer a good match with the, with the current job the world is open go explore and go look for another position. Thank you. And finally, my last question, what are the pros and cons to working in your discipline? Well, the pros are quite obvious. There is an increasing number of older people. So everything you do as a researcher makes sense, has a lot of potential for societal um, impact. And I just like working with all the people in general because of their wisdom, because of their experiences, because of their uh, of them being candid and frank. Um, there's fewer inhibitions, so to say. Um, one of the weaknesses that I find in my job is that I have to work with students, but students are not really enthusiastic about working with all the people. And I think that's not really um, a good attitude. As I said, we get an increasing number of older people. Um, the students at my faculty of social work um, can have great careers working with older people and still they all wanna work with children. And this gap between expectations and realities needs to be, needs to become smaller and that's actually my task, but it's difficult. So I hope that, that, that our work, Hannah, can actually help um, raise the awareness among younger 
um, cohorts, that working with older people is indeed quite meaningful, but also very interesting. For sure. And um, while I was listening to your presentation, um, I was making some notes and, you know, there's certainly areas for developing um, our research collaboration. And before um, I thank you for your time today, is there anything else that you would like to add um, as a little follow on that you may not have covered in your presentation? Yes, I'm, I'm really enthusiastic that you and I um, are working in the domains of technology for older people and leisure for older people, because I think these are two understudied domains um, and will become increasingly important in the near future. And I would like to invite the wider community to engage in studying leisure and older people and technology and older people in more detail as well, because it's so meaningful.